Hello, I'm Lee Benton, pastor of the Open Door Baptist Church. Our congregation and myself would like to take this opportunity to thank you for listening to the sermon today. Our prayer is that the message will help you to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you and keep you is our prayer. The Bible says in John 14, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go ye know, and the way you know. When I read verse 3 again, I want you to put the your name in place of the you there. Every time you see the word you, I want you to put your name there as I read this. I have this marked in my Bible. And if I go and prepare a place for Lee, Amen. I will come again and I will receive Lee unto myself, that where I am, there Lee may be also. Amen. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Amen. How wonderful that is. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to be in the house of the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the grace of God that we have seen, Lord, in uh, some of the lives of our folks today. We thank you, Lord, that your grace is sufficient. We thank you, Lord, that today we gather in this place and we are not men most miserable. Lord, we have the blessed promise that when you went away, you said, I will come again and I'll receive you and forever will be with the Lord and with the ones we love. I pray that you'll help me in these few moments. Lord, may you use me and don't refuse me. Surely, Lord, there's a work I can do today for thee. I pray you'll help us now in Christ's name. Amen and amen. I just wrote down just a couple of notes that the Lord gave me and I wanted to share this with you today because it's heavy upon my heart. Recently, you know that uh, Brother Bobby and Miss Linda had a grandson go home and be with the Lord. And, and now we were given the news uh, on Thursday that Miss Foster went home and be with the Lord. I picked my children up uh, Thursday afternoon and they were telling me about their day. And they said, what about your day? And I said, well, I'll tell you this. Somebody went and seen Jesus today. Amen. And, of course, they, they knew it probably was Miss Foster. And I said, yes, she went and seen Jesus today. And I, I thought about this scripture. I've been thinking about this scripture, and um, I just want to share three things with you. And I, I, I want you to ask the Holy Ghost of God to really place it in your heart today. First thing I want you to see when we think about heaven is the purpose of heaven. The purpose of heaven. The Bible says in verse one, Jesus is speaking to his disciples. Here we know that after Jesus shared this truth, this promise that Thomas and Philip. Uh, they had some questions there, and Thomas said, We don't know whether you go, whether thou goest, and we don't know the way. And Jesus said the famous statement in verse 6, I am the way, not a way. He is the way. Can I get a witness? He is the truth, and He is the life. And no man comes to the Father. Where's the Father? He's in heaven. Jesus said, No man comes unto the Father. No man goes to heaven, but what? By me, by Jesus Christ. You'll go God's way, or you won't go at all. And uh, I'm glad that He is the way. I'm glad that riches is not the way, man. I'm glad that you don't have to be famous. You don't have to be uh, super intelligent. You don't have to be uh, a man of prestige or, or a man that has done all these works through his life. I'm glad that it's through Jesus Christ and through Him alone, amen. And when it's through Jesus and Him alone by grace through faith, then everybody is able to go, amen. The poor can go, the illiterate can go, uh, the one that no one knows and they're in the deepest, darkest part of the jungles of Africa can go, amen, Amen. because it's through the Lord, it's through Jesus Christ that we go to heaven. And so I want to look at the purpose of heaven. I want to remind you that everything God has ever done, everything that God has ever created or He will ever do always has a purpose. The Bible says, and God declared Himself as a God of order. He said that Satan is the one that wants to give doubt and confusion. But God is a God of order. And so God has a purpose for everything, and God also has a purpose for heaven. 
I know there's times in our dark days that we are standing there and it seems that we're surrounded by the devastation, the destruction, our heart is broken. And we say with tears in our eyes, what is the purpose of this? And if you live very long in this life, you'll ask that question. You'll say, what is the purpose of this, God? What is the meaning of this? And I I don't believe that we'll know the full, full purpose of anything until we are in heaven. The songwriter wrote the words. He said, in the by and by, we'll understand it. We'll understand it all in heaven. Amen. And so we ask the question, what is the purpose? But God has a purpose. No matter if it's for blessings or for burdens, God has a purpose. And there's a purpose for heaven. What is that purpose? Why would God create a heaven? Why would God have a heaven that you and I can go to? I thought, first of all, the first purpose is to be rewarded. To be rewarded. The Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 14, I believe it's verse number 12, that we need to understand that all people, all persons, will give an account for their own selves. We've got to stand before God one day. Can I get a witness? You've got to stand before God one day. Whether you're saved or lost, you're going to stand before God one day. You're going to stand before Almighty God, the God that knows the truth about you, the God that knows everything about you. And you're going to stand there and have to give an account for what you did with Jesus if you did anything at all with Jesus. The Bible teaches that those that are lost will stand there in the, at the great white throne judgment. The great white throne judgment. The Bible refers to them as goats, the lost. And they'll stand before God. And the Bible says that the Lord will search the book of life, the Lamb's book of life, which has recorded all the names of those that have came to a place in their life. They've repented of their sins and asked the Lord to save them. And if your name is not there, He'll say to you, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. And the Bible says that the angels will cast you into hell. I've heard people foolishly say, I'm going to hell preach where all my friends are. We're going to have the biggest party we've ever had in hell. There's no party in hell. The Bible says that it's, it's such a vicious place that the Bible says there's the gnashing of the tongue and of the teeth. There's wailing where people are screaming and there's a continual falling and there's utter darkness. Someone once said, I can't believe that there's darkness in hell because hell is considered the, is called the lake of fire. And of course, any time you're around fire, there's light. So it can't be. That's a contradiction of God's Word. But, you know, and God already knew this, but man has finally discovered in their scientific labs that the hot, hottest fire known to man is a flame that does not give light. It Amen. gives darkness, darkness. Jesus will say to those, Depart from me, I never knew you. And they'll begin to give their justifications on why they did what they did. They'll say, Lord, did we not do this? Matthew 7. Did we not go to church? Did we not do this? Did we not pray? Did we not do this? And He'll say, I never knew you. Going to heaven is not based on your works. It's based on His work at Calvary. If you're going to go to God's heaven, you'll go God's way. And God's way is through God's Son, Jesus Christ. You don't knock another door down in heaven. You don't go through the window in heaven. You go through the door. You go through Jesus Christ. The purpose of heaven is, number one, to be rewarded. I thought about how that you and I one day is going to stand before the judgment of Almighty God. And our works is going to be placed before us. And the Bible says that it will go through the fire of judgment. And the Bible says that if it was hay and stubble, obviously it's going to burn. But if it was works for God, works that you did because you love the Lord, you did it with a pure motive, you did it with the right in intentions, those works, the Bible says, will come forth as gold. The Bible says we're going to be rewarded. What's the purpose of heaven to be rewarded? In order to, to be rewarded, there's two things that's got to be involved. Number one, there's got to be a work. I want to remind you today, listen to me, there's a work that we need to be involved in. There's a work. The work of God is all around us. We need to be out witnessing, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need to be serving others. We need to be helping others. We need to be a blessing to others. There's a work out there for us to do. Amen? Not only is there a work to do, but in order to be 
have rewards, there's got to be some willing servants. Come on now, you can wake up and amen that. I'm not out of the Bible yet. We're okay. Don't worry. There's got to be some willing servants. Amen? Guys, be some people that say, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'll do that for thy glory. Lord, if you want me to clean the commode down at the church house, I'll do that. Lord, if you want me to mow the grass, I'll do that. Lord, if you want me to write a little card to someone that's sick and weary, I'll do that. Lord, if you want me to hand a ten dollar bill to somebody that, that I feel like is struggling today, Lord, I'll do that. Listen to me, we serve the Lord by how? Serving others. Amen. So the purpose of heaven number one is to be rewarded. Number two is to receive rest. It's to receive rest. The book of Hebrews talks about Cain, uh, uh, creation's rest. The Bible says in six days that the Lord created everything we know of. And on the seventh day, He rested. Right. Now, that does not mean that He was tired and weary and that He was yawning and needed a cat nap. The word rest, translated from that Hebrew, means that He actually was completed with His work. He had finished His work. It was done. That's, that is creation's rest. And then there's Canaan's rest. We talk about how the Jews, the Bible says that the Jews traveled across the wilderness. Listen to me today. The Bible says that God had a place for them, a land of promise called Canaan land. And it was there, after they defeated their enemy, that God gave them Canaan's rest. Amen. Then thank God there's Calvary's rest. Really? Oh, if you've, if you've been down to the feet of the cross of Calvary, spiritually been there, and you've confessed your sin, turned from your wicked ways, and asked the Lord to save you, then you've received Calvary's rest. Amen. And then there's that rest for all eternity. The rest, you know, that we so desperately desire. You know, one thing about life is the greatest thing besides salvation that we've ever been given from God. I mean, first of all, the giver is God. That it came from God makes it great. Number two, that we didn't deserve it makes it great. You ever receive something and in your heart, man, I don't deserve this. I don't deserve this. I, I, I didn't do enough. You might have received an extra pay for some, helping someone. And you say, I didn't do that much work. But what a blessing that is to receive uh, that blessing from someone else, to receive rest. But because of our sin in this life, sin has brought burdens to us. Some of you is not with me. You need to catch up. You want me to stop for about five seconds? Catch up with me. Number one, the purpose of heaven is what? To receive rewards. Number two is to receive rest. Yes, These burdens in our life causes us to get weak and weary and frail and faint. Right. And it not, only, it not only causes weariness in our body, but in our mind, in our spirit, and in our soul. Right. And the Lord has heaven for those that are saved. Why? that we might receive rest for our spirit, for our mind, for our soul. Someone always say when they see a gravestone, they say, R.I.P., rest in peace. The only ones that can rest in peace are those that are saved. There's no rest in hell. There's no rest in hell. The Bible says, God said, that there's no rest to the wicked. That's the Bible. There's no rest to the wicked. They're like the what? Troubled sea. They're tossed to and fro. And we get tossed in this life, and our life gets battered. Life is precious. If I was to take maybe a, a, a vase or a, a something of that caliber, and someone gives this to me, and it's made of some rare uh, uh, stone or whatever it may be, and I know that the price tag on this vase was more than I could ever afford, and someone gave that to me, that vase would be precious to me. Well, what that means is not only that it's valuable, but it's also vulnerable. I know that I better not let the kids play with it. I know I better put it up on a top shelf. It's vulnerable to what? To be shattered. To be broken. To be damaged. And that's the way life is. It is valuable, but it's also vulnerable. And so all these things come in our life, and what happens? Our life gets broken. Our life gets battered. We get tossed to and fro, and we get weary. But the Lord has a place called heaven where we can receive rest for our soul. Amen. And I thought about number three, the purpose of heaven is to be reunited Amen. with our redeemed loved ones. Hallelujah. When I first started preaching, I would say, one day we'll be reunited with loved ones. And the Lord corrected me. He said, 
you won't be reunited with those that are not saved. You are reunited with the redeemed. If you have family that knew the Lord, that asked the Lord to save them from their sins, repented of their iniquity, asked the Lord to come into their life, where people say, well, I asked the Lord to come into my heart. There's no Scripture in the Bible where the Bible says to ask God to come into your heart. There's no Scripture where it says God says to ask me to come into your heart. None. The Scripture says repent of your sins and ask for my forgiveness and turn in faith to my crucifixion and resurrection for your salvation. And so it's through the Lord Jesus Christ we're saved is to be reunited with our redeemed loved ones. This morning we sung that song, I'll meet you in the morning. No doubt your mind was, was just uh, consumed with people that you know that one day you'll see them again in heaven. When I was singing and I was looking up, uh, trying, not that I was having some dream or vision, but I was looking that I may concentrate on the words of that song. And in my mind I could see my grandfather, Clayman Benton, who I love so much. I could see my old days who I love so much, my great-grandmother. I could see Craig Jordan, my best friend in school, that uh, was tragically, him and his wife, tragically killed on a road one day. He was a pastor of a church. I, I can see those people's faces in my mind. And I'm glad, so glad, thank God, that I'll be reunited. That's the purpose of heaven. We've got a place. You ever had a reunion? And one thing you've got to find out is where we're going to meet at. Where we're going to meet. Well, so-and-so's got a community center down there. We'll go down to Grandma's house. Well, she don't have the room. We can go down to Aunt Joe's house. Well, guess what? we got a reunion, and the Lord's already got the place ready. Hallelujah. Come on now. Oh, I tell you what, the purpose of heaven is to be rewarded, to receive rest, and number three, to be reunited. The Bible says in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4, the Bible says that, the Bible says that we... The Bible says that we won't prevent those that are asleep. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. The voice of archangel and the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to be with them in the air. And so shall we ever be. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Psalmist David was sharing about his, his heart being broken because his son had, had, had died. And David said in his tears, he said, He cannot come to where I am, but I can go to where he is. I'm going to tell you something about your loved ones that are redeemed and in heaven. They don't have any desire to come back. They don't have any desire to come back. Well, they, they loved us. Sure they did. But I guarantee you, they know the truth is, if you're saved, they can't come to you, but you can go to them. Amen to be reunited with loved ones. I, I want to share an illustration. I'm going to close this sermon here. I, I thought about the illustration I heard of a mother and father that had a young daughter that passed away, and they were so broken. They were so broken. It was the only child they had. and They decided that maybe the best thing for both of them to just go away and get away from everybody and try to get away from everything and just deal with their grief and just think about what they need to do in their life. They were at a crossroads. And this story was given by D.L. Moody many years ago and said they were over there in England and said they were one day just walking in a field and they saw in a the distance there was a shepherd with some sheep. True story. And they said that the sheep was grazing and following that shepherd as he carried his staff. And they said that he, the shepherd came to a river and said that the shepherd came and they said they knew that the sheep were going to have to cross that, that river and said that one of the smallest lambs stood in front of that river and began to, to bleat and began to cry because of the fear of that river. And they said they saw that shepherd lean over and pick that little old sheep up and said that shepherd stepped out in that water and those waves were just a rushing by him and the current was speeding by and he walked across with that little lamb and he went about 50 yards past the river and he set that little lamb down. They said that lamb turned around and started bleating for its mother. And it didn't take long till Mama got wind of it. 
and said that Mama Sheep raised her head and went running and ran right across that river right over there where a baby lamb was. He says, and after that, they said, all those sheep went across that river. And I thought about that, and they said in their heart, God said to them, I took your little lamb, and I've helped him, I've helped her across that river. I've carried him. And he's over here, and he so desires, or she so desires, for you to come across that river too. I'll tell you about heaven. It's, it's wonderful that the Lord's there, but I believe that if I'm going to go somewhere on vacation, I remember as a little kid, we used to go to Pigeon Forge. And as a little kid, Pigeon Forge wasn't much to it. It was all about Gatlinburg. And we'd go to Pigeon Forge. We felt like that it the, the, so wasn't so much hustle and bustle and we more of a family atmosphere. And through the years, since I was a little runt, they started adding attractions. Perry Smith, a millionaire there, I've slept in his house. He's fed me. He's a godly man. He owned Wild Wheels there in Pigeon Forge and and he has a, a bungee jump there. The only time I've ever bungee jumped because he uh, pretty well made me do it. And I jumped. And uh, and uh, anyway, they begin to get more track. And I remember as going there as a kid. going. It seemed like every time you went there, they had something new. Something new. And now it's one of the most visited places uh, in the South, if not in America. People love Pigeon Forge. It's about overcome Gatlinburg now. And I thought about how that, you know, what they need to do, they need to just get more attractions. Why? They want you to come. And you've got to understand this. When the Lord takes one of your loved ones, He just has another attraction in heaven for you. He's just bringing one more. And so the more attractions He has over there, I mean, He already has the street of gold. He already has the walls of jasper. He already has the twelve foundations of rare stone, the gates of pearl. He has all these wonderful things there, and yet he'll take a loved one, and he'll pick that lamb up, his own lamb, and he'll cross the river of death, and he'll cross, and he'll place that person there in heaven for eternity, and he reminds you, hey, you've not got here yet, but all I'm trying to do is put a longing in your heart to get here. Put a longing there for you to get here. And I'm telling you what, there's more attractions in heaven now for me at 38 years old than there was when I was 15 years old. He keeps adding attractions. And the more I have to say farewell to someone that I love, it's another attraction in heaven. And it makes me want to go even more and even more. You know what happens? We live in this life and we just enjoy it so much. We want to make money. We want to do things. And we forget that there's a heaven. And so God says, okay, it's time to remind you that there's a home that I've prepared and so he'll, he'll so, with such delicacy, he'll pick one of our family members and he'll lift them up and he'll take them over that river and he reminds us it's not about this life. It's not about this world. It's about Jesus Christ and it's about heaven. And I've got more attractions. This, the foster family, Bobby and Lent, they've got another attraction in heaven waiting for them in heaven or us to be reunited with our redeemed loved ones. I want to say number four is to eternally enjoy our redemption. I've never enjoyed my redemption like I'm going to enjoy it when I get to heaven. I'll just be honest with you. Some things in this life causes me to, to not really get a hold of that I'm redeemed by the blood of Jesus, that my sins have been forgiven, that I'm washed by the blood and that I'm not going to hell. Sometimes I just can't get a hold of that in this old body. But one day, hallelujah, I will forever and ever and for all eternity, I will enjoy my redemption. Amen. And I will say also, it is to be forever with our Redeemer. To be forever with our Redeemer. Oh, I tell you what, the Word of God, I said this, to, I think it was Bobby and Linda last night, the Word of God only shares just a little bit of what heaven's like. Are you listening to me today? It only shares just a little bit of what heaven's like. Oh, he's told us, yeah, there's that street of gold. There's that river. It's like under crystal. There's the throne of God. And there's Jesus Christ sitting on the throne of heaven in charge of all things. There is the sainted dead. There is our loved ones that have been carried across by the shepherd over that river of death. There's so many things there that we read about and there's so many other things that we don't have any idea of. 
I believe that, you know, I believe that in heaven that I'll play the perfect golf game. I'm looking forward to that. Amen. I'll kill the biggest deer or harvested the biggest deer. Amen. I'm just kidding. But you know, there's so much about heaven we don't know. We have no idea about. But I'm telling you what, we do know that the greatest wonder, and, and I'm using the word attraction loosely, but the greatest attraction that is in heaven is Jesus Christ. Amen. To be able to see Him. Amen. The one that shed His blood. The one that said, I know that you took my name in vain. I know that you cussed the tree church. You cussed the preacher. You don't. You didn't love at one time. You didn't love the Bible. You didn't love God, but I loved you. I cared about you, and I shed my blood that you might be saved. He is the greatest wonder of heaven. Hallelujah! And I'm telling you what. I'm jealous today. I'm telling with all my heart. I'm telling you the truth. I'm jealous of TJ. I'm jealous of Ann Foster because they actually are looking upon Jesus Christ. They get to see Him and touch Him. Amen. And they get to fall at His feet and say, Thank you, Lord. Amen. Oh, how often have I heard Ann Foster say, Thank the Lord. Amen. Thank the Lord. And now she's saying, Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Really? Well, i tell you what a blessing it is. The greatest thing of heaven is that Jesus Christ is there. No one's ever loved me like Jesus. No one's ever cared for you like Jesus. The songwriter that wrote that song. He was in the ministry. He was serving the Lord, trying to do everything right. And his wife one day left him for another, another man. He had, they'd been together for a long time. And he was broken and, and shattered and depressed. And he had been known as a songwriter. And one day he got this trip to go over to his piano. And he was burdened about his wife leaving him. And he got a piece of paper and he wrote that song, No one ever cared for me like Jesus. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. Oh, I tell you, he loves you today. He cares for you and one day those that are saved will be able to see him forever. Then in closing, the second point is not only the purpose of heaven, but the people of heaven. He said, if I go, he said, I'm going to come back. And I'll receive you. You. Who's that you? That you is the redeemed. That you is those that have confessed their sins. They've been forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ. They decided they were sick of their sin. They were sick of going away from God. And they turned to God and said, Lord, I'm a sinner. I understand that I'm on my way to punishment in hell forever for my sin." I can either A, accept your payment on the cross for my sin, or B, I can pay for my own sin in hell forever. And they've said, I don't want to pay for it in hell. I accept your payment. I accept, accept your free pardon. I accept that, God. And they've accepted that. Those are the U's in John 14. The people of heaven is the redeemed. Amen? So, preacher, does good people go to hell? Good people go to hell. There's, there's preachers in hell. There's people that sung gospel songs that are in hell today. There's people that would give the shirt off their back to you. They're in hell today. Well, that's not fair. That's not right. Oh, yes, it is. God is a just God. God is a holy God. And God has made it very plain, very simple, very clear that if you're going to go to God's heaven, you're going to go God's way. And God's way is through God's Son, Jesus Christ. And then last of all, number three is the promise of heaven. He said, I'm going. And he has. The book of Acts. After his resurrection, he was fellowshipping with his disciples and those other Christians. And about that time, he began to ascend. He began to rise up from the earth. And the disciples were dumbfounded. They'd never seen nothing like this before. And they watched him, and he began to be lifted up into the eastern sky. And they watched him, and then all of a sudden the angels appeared. And they looked at the disciples and they said, Why stand ye a-gazing? They weren't being rude or mean to the disciples. They said, uh, 
He's told you about this day. He's told you over and over that He's going to go away. John 14, that He's going to go away. Why stand you gazing? This same Jesus that you see go away will in so like manner come again. Hallelujah. I don't know when He's coming back, but I know He is. Just as uncertain as I am when He's coming back, I'm as, I'm as certain that He is coming back. That is the promise of heaven. That whosoever believes from the name of the Son of God shall be saved. And He's coming back. And when He comes back, guess what? When He comes back, we're going. <laughs> we're going. Amen? We're going. And before we even get there, we get to make a brief stop. We do. We get to make a brief stop. God's got it scheduled so, so wonderfully. We get to make a brief stop in the sky, in the clouds. And you know why? For that reunion. Amen. We get to make a brief stop. We get to go ahead and look and see Ann Foster, see TJ, see Clement Benton, see, see David Bickerstaff, see Rick Smith, see whoever it is, see old uh, 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 Miss Esther. We get to see all these people. We'll see them. We'll see them and then boop. We're in heaven forever. Amen. We're with God forever. The purpose of heaven, the people of heaven, and the promise of heaven. If you don't have that promise in your heart, if you're not saved, you have no promise of heaven, but you have a promise of hell. You have a promise of hell. I hope today you know the Lord is your personal Savior. Thank you so much for listening to the sermon today. We hope and pray that you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. The Bible says in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Bible says in John, chapter number 14, that Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Our prayer here at Open Door Baptist Church is that you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. The Bible says that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. No matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, Jesus Christ loves you. He died for you, and He's more than capable and more than willing to cleanse you from unrighteousness and from your sins and make you a child of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The Bible says if you repent, turn from your sin and turn to Jesus Christ and by faith believe in His death, His burial, and His resurrection for your salvation, you too can be saved. Our prayer is that you think upon this and that very soon you'll make an eternal decision to receive Jesus as your personal Savior. Thank you so much.